Yin closed her eyes, leaning back in the chair, feeling the pain on her back. A quiet sigh escaped her lips. She muttered while gently caressing her aching back. As the teacher left the classroom, Yun gathered her things and stood up. The weariness evident on her face. Are you okay? She heard a concerned voice behind her and turned to see Zerwin standing, fixing his backpack. Yes, she replied. Maybe he seemed to notice her tiredness. Are you sure about that? Because I have noticed you look tired most of the time. Don't you get enough sleep? He inquired again, and she shook her head. You can say that I'm good. Don't worry. She slung her backpack over her shoulder and began to walk out of the classroom. When Jaewon stopped her at the door, Yun, wait. Can we talk? She stopped and leaned against the classroom door, letting out a sigh. She really wanted to lay down on her bed. She missed her bed and sleep. Nodding in response to his question, she waited as he stood in front of her. How's my brother doing? I mean, his progress. His exams are starting in few days, so I just wanted to be sure. Oh, don't worry about him. He already covered the whole syllabus. That's good. He is actually quite intelligent. I don't have to put much effort. It seems like he had already learned everything way before. I don't get why you thought about getting him a tutor. Do you not want to tutor him? He leaned on the opposite wall, studying her expression. Who shook her head? You are getting me wrong. I didn't mean that. I'm just saying he didn't need any tutor. He seems to grasp everything easily. He nodded. His eyes never leaving her face. There was a pause before he spoke. I see. Maybe I was just looking for a reason to have you around more. Yun followed her eyebrows in confusion. What do you mean? He stepped a bit closer. Why are you acting so oblivious? He questioned. Yun tried to push her. Gut feeling, which was telling her to run. Obvious to what? Why don't you see Yun? He murmured. I have been trying to give you clues, and you are intentionally drawing the signs. That caught her off guard. What are you? I like you, he said, grabbing her hand softly. Why can't you see that? I really like you for a while now, but you never seem to notice that I have been here trying to get clues, wanting to more than just a friend. Yun shook her head, taking her hand back from his. I didn't know about it, but I'm committed. You knew that too. I can be better than him. I'm sorry, Jay. This conversation is useless. I have a boyfriend. I'm not looking for anything else. She said, but he took another step closer, now cornering her. The look on his face you never saw before. I know you had a crush on me, and you like me too. But why him, Jay? He will never love you like I do. I can see you are not happy with him. It's so obvious. Is he on drugs or what? I did have a crush on you, but it was just that a uh, crush. What I have for Jagok is love. She explained with patience. I would appreciate if you don't assume things about my happiness with my boyfriend. Even please, Jevan said in a pleading tone, not wanting to face rejection from the girl he had liked for so long. If only he knew earlier. Sometimes he would caught her staring at him, but. He had never thought she liked him even a little bit, and when he finally mustered for the confidence, it was already too late. Yun shook her head, uncomfortable with the proximity. I need to go. Excuse me, she said, attempting to pull past him. However, Jaewon grabbed her shoulder, placing both hands on it. She stared at him with wide eyes at the sudden force, and the next moment, his lips was on hers. Her body went rigid at his rough grip. Her immediate reaction was to push him away as hard as she could, but he didn't budge. He gripped her hand over his chest so she won't push him away. But the next moment, she felt him being pulled off, and she heard the third groan that followed. Her shaky hands reached her face, wiping her mouth harshly. That hurts. She heard him saying, and the next moment, she felt a grip on her arm, making her flinch. She looked up to meet Jungkook's eyes. Jungkook, oh, Jungkook, you didn't tell me you do be here. You know, I snapped over Jaewon in shock. Was there anything left that he was doing to fuel Jungkook's anger? Jaewon smiled as he stood up. He looked back at Jungkook. She wanted to tell him that Jaewon was just spouting nonsense and that she didn't say anything like that. But her throat closed up as she saw him staring at her. 
staring back at her with hurt and pained expression. Well, I told you, Jungkook, you need to shut your mouth. Jaewon eyes narrowed, and in a swift moment, he swung his fist, connected with Jungkook's face. The impact made him stumble back, surprised by the sudden punch. Jungkook clenched his fist, throwing a punch, hitting his square in the jaw. The situation escalated in a full-blown fist fight, both young men grappling with each other. Jaewon strangled him to the ground, landed harsh punches on Jungkook, who struggled to free himself. Stop! Eun pleaded. Rushing to intervene and separate them, Jaewon ignored her. His, his anger blinding him as he continued to rain down punches at Jungkook. Jaewon, leave him. She tried to grab his arm, but he pushed her aside harshly. Yoon shrieked in fear, instinctively covering her bump. Seizing the opportunity, Jungkook flipped them over. Now on top, delivering hard punches to Jaewon's face. What is happening here? The sound of a slap echoed in the office. The harsh impact making Jungkook's face turn to the other side. His eyes shut in pain. You now you are becoming an animal that can't control his anger. Jungkook controlled every fiber of his body not to lash back, but he was not in a position to retaliate. The principal got to know, and they called all three of them into the office. Jimin heard about it and went inside the principal office with Yoon to check if she was okay. He stayed beside her. Jaewon was standing there too. His parents were sitting. They called Jungkook's parents as well, and his father seized the opportunity to create his son in front of so many people. Yoon, Jimin, Jaewon eyes widened in shock as Jungkook endured the humiliation. Mr. Jaewon, no need to raise your hand on your son. I won't tolerate this in my office. The Jaewon huffed in anger, glaring at his son before taking a seat. You too. I'm giving a last warning. If after this I see any of you getting into a fight, you will get expelled. I don't care if you have to take readmission in another college. Jaewon, I did not expect this behavior from you. I'm sorry, ma'am. It won't happen again. It better not. And Jungkook, you. It's not his fault, ma'am. I was the one who started the fight. Jungkook looked up from the ground for the first time, and their eyes met. Where Jaewon rolled his eyes dismissively. Whoever started the fight, next time both of you will get expelled. And Yun, the Jun cut off the principal well as he looked at his son. Son, isn't she the girl you left house for, the one whom you got pregnant? You know it's quite the embarrassment that you're fighting over her. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence. Yun wished she could disappear. The way his father looking at her mockingly and everyone eyes on her. That was too much. Jungkook eyes burned with anger, and the others in the room had widened eyes. You. Enough, Mr. Jun. Such personal matters should not be addressed in this manner. This is highly inappropriate. All of you remember the warning. Now go to the nurse, both of you. Jungkook clenched his jaw, stormed out of the office. Yun followed him, calling his name, trying to grab his jacket, but he jerked away, not bothering to look back at her words. Her eyes were teary, but she tried to hold back her emotion. No, don't cry right now. You stop running. Let him go. But he needs to go to the nurse, and he will not treat his wound. I know him. I will tell him to take care of him. He gave her a reassuring smile, squeezing her hand gently. You, is it true that you are pregnant? They heard the voice behind them, and Jimin turned around, shooting him an angry glare. Yes, yeah, she is. Surprise. Park Jimin, do you want me to call your parents too? Jungkook found himself back at the convenience store, a familiar, red, mundane place that, for the moment, offered a respite from the storm in his mind. He had nothing to do, and to escape from his troubled thoughts, he only had to distract himself. That's what he is doing this morning. He looked completely worn out, as if his life had drained every ounce of energy from his body. His face adorned with purple bruises and cut on his lips, maybe a black eye from the recent fight, but he didn't seem bothered. He just washed his face, threw a hoodie, and let his messy hair cover his eyes. The hoodie was put over his head, covering his face and mask, so he won't scare kids. 
with the face that he could be mistaken for someone who kidnapped us. He looked worse than he thought. Maybe he taken Jevon lightly, but of course he had athletic body now. No wonder he tackled him to the ground, making Jungkook face even more of a mess than it already is. And now he is thinking that he needs to take care of himself. Maybe hit the gym. He looks like he got into some gang fight, or more like a cat and dog fight. As he goes through the task at the store, he can't stop thinking about the fight. Even though he's battered, he feels strangely satisfied for landing punches on Jaewon. Confronting him was something he wanted to do for a long time, and now that he has, the bruises on his face feels like a small price to pay. Even though his face is bruised, Jaewon's face was worse than him because how hard punches he delivered him. How could he leave him? The moment he saw both of them, he just didn't know what he was feeling: hurt, pain. Numbness, anger. But where should he direct that anger? At her for kissing him, or at himself for his love was not enough. Even though just last night he felt on cloud nine when he confessed when she called him for best boyfriend, and today receiving the apartment key, he thought everything was falling into place. Did she really kiss him violently, or did, or did Jevon force it? Because he can't imagine such long move from that boy. If Jevon hurt Yoon, he was ready to risk getting expelled from the school. But this time, he will make sure that he was never able to lurk around Yoon again. Even though it was an empty threat, Jungkook knew he'd not likely to end up getting hurt instead. But what if Yoon violently kissed him? It's not unreasonable for Jungkook to think like that. And even witnessing that scene would assume the worst. The way her Hands were placed on his chest. The sight was sickening to watch. A scene he desperately wanted to remove from his memory, yet he kept replaying in his mind. His insecurities were already heightened because he was not like Jaewon. Would he ever be enough for anyone? No matter what he did, it seems to fall short. He just wanted to put an end all of this. Tired of constant turmoil, he want a break, a real break. Glanced towards the cell where the voice came from. He watched a three or maybe four years old, pointing excitedly at the chocolates his father picking him up on his arms. Which one do you want? The kid asked, sparkle as he pointed at a particular chocolate. Take it, my big boy. The scene was adorable for anyone witnessing it, but Jungko couldn't help but. He wished he had experienced that kind of childhood, a time when he could openly express his desire and his father would lovingly fulfill them. Or lovingly look at him, be proud of him. Instead, he always hid himself in the room whenever his father came home. Jung bring back the tears. Oh no, he don't want to cry. A little voice interrupted his thought. Jung Kook smiled as he looked up, but his smile remained hidden behind the mask he was wearing. He reached out to take the items, scanning them at the counter. Jungkook stared at his mobile phone, watching it ring continuously on the table. He knew who it was, Yoon. He felt stuck, like he was standing at a crossroad with no clear path to take. But his mind was a mess, and he don't know what to say, how to even start the conversation. Should he pick up and face the mess? Should he let the phone ring and deal with it later? He questioned whether he was ready to hear Yoon's voice, unsure of what words would pass between them. Yet a part of him longed to hear her, to understand her perspective, to find a way back to the warmth and comfort. But at the same time, he feared that talking might make things more complicated. The ringing continued, each tone like a reminder of the messiness he was trying to avoid. Jungkook wished he had a clearer answer, a solution to make everything okay again. But for now, he remained paralyzed, wrestling with his thought. Seven words rang through his mind. I'm just saying you might be putting all the suffers, but deep down she has still feeling for me. Are you sure about that, Jungkook? Do you think she is really happy with you? The phone finally stopped ringing, leaving the room in an uneasy silence. A knock echoed through the room. The door creaked open, and Tehin entered. Hey, Jungkook, you okay? Jungkook didn't turn to face him. His eyes closed. Did you turn mute or something? They are not the time. He mumbled and Tehang sat in the opposite chair. Jung. He mumbled and Tehang sat in the opposite chair, grabbing Jungkook's phone. Why are you not picking up your calls? Jungkook let out a sigh, running his finger through his disheveled hair. I don't know what to say to her. 
at least talk to her about avoiding the situation with some nothing. Talk about what? How I saw her kissing him? How it felt like a punch to the gut? Then he said, I talked to you and Anne. What I will tell you one thing, don't jump into an illusion, you will regret it later. I know what you saw was hard for anyone to digest, but just tear out first. I don't know if I can handle hearing an explanation there. It hurts too much. I can't get the image out of my mind. I don't know what to do. Closing yourself off won't make the pain go away. Talk to her, please. Hear her out. Do you not trust her? I do, I do, but I'm scared. I'm scared of losing her, of being alone, of not being enough. Thing I soften as tears begin to flow from his eyes. The emotion he had bottled up for months acting strong and mature now came pouring out. He had not quite when he had to work day and night, nor when he kicked out of one house, but now he can't take it anymore. I don't know if I can be a good dad there. Look at me, I'm a mess. I've got these issues and I'm terrified that I will mess everything up. I'm not even sure I can provide for them. I'm someone who can't deal with his own issues without trying to run away for them. And now I have this big responsibility which I'm feeling miserably. What if I'm not enough for both of them? Will she stay with me? Can I make them happy? What if I make a mistake that let me do lose both of them? I can't live without them. She is all I have. Stop putting yourself down, girl. You're scared, I know, but you can't let that fear control you. It's not the time you're not feeling. You're doing better than anyone can handle this situation. You're scared about making mistakes. You will make mistakes, we all do. But what matter is that you are willing to make. You are willing to learn and grow. Your love for them, for love. For you and the baby will guide you. Are you listening to me? Jungkook nodded, sniffing his nose, and then he kissed him in a tight hug. Now stop crying. Get yourself together to solve this matter with you. I can't see both of you crying. This is the last time I'm acting as your guardian angel. Next time, I'll both of your ears. Jungkook gave him a tight-lipped smile. His brain for everything in so much many possibilities. Young. Yeah, you said she told you everything. Can you tell me what she said? No, I'm not going to tell you. You know why? Because I don't want you to rely on a third person. I want you to believe in each other, trust each other. No third person should be able to ruin your relationship. What matter is that you both share, what you both feel, and the understanding only you two can have. Don't let anyone else dictate the narrative of your relationship. You need to talk to him, let her explain, and you need to open up to communication with the kid, but trust him and let her trust you. Jango carefully crawled into her bed, the open window indicated that she was waiting for him. He, her face was beside her on the bed, he placed it on the table. Taking a moment to adjust her blanket, he made sure she was comfortable pulling it over her lower wrist before sitting down beside her. As he moved, she stirred in her sleep, causing Jungkook to freeze, but she settled back into her slumber, allowing him to continue. He slightly pressed her fear from her eyes, scanning her face, and the sight of dried tears on her cheeks and puffy eyes just like his own. Regardless of the reason for the current situation, he couldn't shake the wave of guilt from making her cry during the time. Not when he would, he will never be the reason of her tears. He laid down the staying at the side in our room. There was not too much thought in his mind thought that might well everything be okay by tomorrow. The soft rays of sun in the chilly weather was filtering through the glass window and falling on the young couple laying beside each other. Both of them were worn out because of the flood of emotion they both go through. Then was tracing the purple glasses on Jungle Grace with her finger. Her touch was gentle as she traced the cut on his gloves. The realization of his presence beside her was both shocking and revealing. Love in her room tears streamed down her face as she anxiously waiting for him. The urge to clear everything with him was overwhelming and she even complimented going to Jungle House but she stopped her. He didn't want her to go anywhere in the cold night. The waiting was agonizing. She spent hours anticipating his response, calling him repeatedly and sending messages in desperation. 
the lack of communication flung her into a pool of uncertainty and fear. The harsh reality that he was not talking to anyone, coupled with the coldness of winter night laughter feeling helpless, and she couldn't help but feel revealed. Jungkook stood in his sleep as not, his crunching at the touch. He slowly opened his eyes. The first thing he saw was her staring at him. His eyes widened in surprise, taking in the sight of her face close to his. The room was quiet, their gaze locked, holding a mixture of emotion that neither had expressed yet. Hi. She mumbled softly, unsure what to say. Jungkook seemed to blend back to reality as he sat up, an awkward atmosphere filling the room, and he rubbed his eyes, trying to shake off the grogginess from his sleep. Did you sleep well? She asked, sitting up as well, and Jungkook responding with a non-committal hum. I'll just go now. He stood up and instinctively held onto his wrist, permitting him to glance back at her. That encircled his wrist. Where are you going? School. No one let you enter inside the school. It's 10 a.m. Jungkook looked at her, finding his boss. Did he sleep that much? You did not wake me up. You need to go. It's not Sunday. No, we don't. Sit back here. We need to talk. Jungkook took a short breath and then nodded his head, settling back uncomfortably on the bed. We need to talk about yesterday. His eyes flickered to hers, and for a moment she saw confusion, pain, and a hint of anger in them. But he remained silent, nodding his head, waiting for her to continue. 